Section 10, the complete process and precautions for disassembling and assembling A17 CPU. Apple 5 Pro and 15 Pro Max use A17 CPUs. When we want to dismantle the CPU, the first step is to scrape off the edge glue. The purpose of scraping off the edge glue is when we dismantle the CPU. High temperature will not cause the capacitors and resistors on the side to fall off with the CPU. Edge scraping glue does not need too high a temperature. Although the wind gun in the small chip mode, the above shows 500 degrees, but the air gun is a point blow. When we go to the edge glue, just soften the glue on the side. After that, the edge glue can be cleaned. These large capacitors. If the hook goes too deep, it will cause the capacitor to fall off. Will cause the capacitor to fall off. Then it can be divided into two or three times. Scrape this one off the side. When scraping edge glue, temperature is just an auxiliary. Doesn't have to be deep as long as. The vinyl is a little broken where it is connected. We are in the process of dismantling the CPU. It doesn't even come down with you. The air gun cannot blow for a long time. Click to blow and approach when you need temperature. When the glue softens, the air gun can be taken away. Finished. You can pry it from here now. You can also pry it from here. Capacitors and resistors on the side do not need to be removed. Additionally, add directly on it to clean up. Add directly on top. Disassemble the CPU. When we put it in this place, it already has a staircase. After finding the port between the CPU and the PCB, we'll press down first. As long as we come together here, we can just reach in and remove the CPU. Capacitor resistance here will not fall off. Disassemble Apple CPU. Easiest place to drop points is these four corners. These grounded points can be easily pulled off. What is the reason? When we were shaking in circles, try to zoom in a little bit. Don't just put it in the middle. Then this circle is easy to drop, and then we can go through another lens. Then we can now switch this to another shot. Take a look. Overall disassembly and assembly of the CPU. You can see the CPU lifted above. This direction and the rotation of the air gun. In this state of replenishing the temperature, it may be blocked below because it's a vertical picture. So the focus will be on the top. It's in big chip mode. Temperature and wind volume are still fixed. It is the same as what is usually used. As it heats up, we wait for it to rise to a moderate temperature. It will ring three times, and you can operate it. In fact, it is also possible to heat up while heating up. Temperature 475, airflow 100. So when we warm up the entire CPU, the corner range should be exceeded. This will not cause the process of prying the CPU. Some areas are not heated in place. Drop point occurs. The first thing we need to pay attention to is the power supply part, because we can now see the power supply part is glued. So be careful with the power supply. As soon as the temperature arrives, and suddenly we can take the CPU off. There are also many ways to deal with the glue and tin paste on the CPU. The safest way is to clean it with a brush. During the cleaning process. Also skillful. The skills are not in place. It will also appear in the process of brush cleaning. Drop point occurs. You can see it better under the microscope. This is a microscope. The process of cleaning glue and tin. 
Definitely. The small chip mode is used R1 in chipset mode. It warms up the area very quickly. This time we can't brush it. Now for the test. During the test, we blew on the CPU. Once the tin slurry melts, we can operate. We're putting it on now. Okay, I can see it. The solder paste here has started to melt. After melting, the first thing is to clean the tin on it first. After the tin is cleaned, clean the glue again. When the brush touches the CPU, the air gun is evacuated. In this way, our brushes will not blow. If the gun is not evacuated while cleaning the CPU, the loss of the brush will become particularly large. Clean the pad with a brush. The capacitor above will not be damaged. Or is the cooperation of the left and right hands the main direction? We should not clamp the CPU too tightly during the cleaning process. Clamp too tight. Thermal expansion will cause CPU problem, so it's loosely clipped. We have designed this. Even if it is loose, it will not brush the CPU off. There are things blocking the CPU on all sides. At this time, tin can be planted. But if you think the black one here is uglier, then we just need to take a little bit of washing water appropriately. After a gentle cleaning on top, what was left just now, it'll be cleaned up by us all at once. Then tin planting can be carried out at this time, using a blessing table CPU on top, then clean up the top, then clean up the top. Solder paste is 199. In the process of scraping tin, if there are too many oil stains in the solder paste, then we can dig a little bit, Use a clean cloth to absorb a little oil stain from it. Press it with your hand, and the oil stain will be on this one. Then it will be better if we shave like this. Now put the solder paste directly. Scratch. Try to put every point of tin pulp. Control to the same state. R1 in chipset mode. Blow the suction directly into balls. During the blowing process, we use high and low to control the temperature you want. Fortunately, in the process of planting tin, and we see two things. Something went wrong. That's where the solder ball comes out. Came here. We can replant the tin. Or you can divide it evenly. Average the tin well. This one is missing. Then you can go up a little bit again. This way we don't need to drag the tin again. Clean up again. You can also remove the tin mesh. See if these dots are functional circuits. If it is powered by ground, we can also not deal with it. After the tin planting is completed, observe each pad. CPU is planted with tin. We will find there is still a small amount of vinyl on the side of the CPU. Small amounts of vinyl like this, if not cleaned. Wait a minute, during the installation process, we'll block the capacitance resistance on the side. It's not easy to do the action that causes us to return. Then stand up, just cut it off with a number 11 blade. Cut off. Try to be as steady as possible when cutting. Now the entire CPU can be placed on the side for backup. Now it's time to clean the pads. There are several methods of pad cleaning. Tin suction tape can be used. You can also use a 210 knife head. 
First scrape the tin off the top. After the tin is scraped off, remaining glue, you can press down with a little force it, and this glue will also be cleaned up by us. The premise is that the knife head cannot be damaged. If there is any damage, it will peel off after scratching. In a state like this, it won't peel. It can also be assisted by IE in chipset mode. After the assistance, the glue is because it will soften, it will be faster after softening. When cleaning up these glues and tin, try to leave the area closer to the capacitor and resistor. Because if you don't stay once touched during operation, the capacitance resistance on the side will fall off. We can clean up the last step. This step next to the side. The air gun is only used as an auxiliary. You can't blow it for a long time. You have to get used to it. If the reverse side is the model of the power chip, blowing for so long will cause the power supply to burst. Okay, clean it up. After cleaning up, there will be a lot of tin paste residue on the pad. Then this time, tin suction tape and help us clean all the pads above. Stack the tin suction tape into two layers. This is The ability to absorb tin will be stronger. Stacked in two layers. Look carefully. After the top is dragged, it is flat. Once it is flattened, it can't go any further. If you drag down, it is prone to paint peeling. The lower knife edge has capacitance resistance, which is pressed a little crooked. This. Let's wait for the separate one and straighten it. Be especially careful at this time. Try not to touch the resistance on the side of the tin suction tape. But it now has a layer of glue in the middle. We haven't cold yet. So basically, it's untouchable. Okay, cleaned up. After cleaning up, then clean up the glue in this row. If we are hard, it will be very hard. There will be special effects as well. But it's better to still need a blowgun. Support is the best. Now there is no air gun assistance. Just push it away, and then the row cleans up. Air gun assist can soften the glue. Cleaning process will be smoother. The auxiliary is just a shallow blow. It doesn't have to be very hot. If you reach a high temperature, there will be resistance on the edge, resistance shedding. If you want to weld back the misplaced ones, temperature required will be much higher. Then we can use the heat conduction of the forceps. Clamp the ends directly. This way we can weld at the same time. It won't let the reverse side have too high temperature. Okay, it's done here. Okay. 
We must check the current before installing the CPU. If there is any current abnormality, then it must be repaired to normal before installing the CPU. Current takeoff current is 25. The temperature is a bit high, it can go even lower, and we freeze. So it's right now, you can install the CPU. Before installation, check the pads one last time. There is still some residue to be removed. Like this one now has tin on it. Then install the CPU directly. Will lead to a connection in this area. So just to be on the safe side, it still needs to be cleaned up. Okay. After cleaning up, then all that's left is to install the CPU. Start to test whether it can be turned on normally. The air gun used is still the large chip mode. Temperature follows the wind volume and remains unchanged when dismantling. Oil should not be too much. After the location is right, we start to warm up directly. We can now look directly at the current, but when the mainboard is hot, its takeoff current will be too large. 100 takeoff is normal. Boot normal. Then the disassembly and assembly of the CPU is complete. As the temperature decreases, the normal takeoff current should be 80, 90. Let's look again. There was 100 just now. It is now 89. If the temperature drops again, it will reach around 80. Then this A17 CPU disassembly and assembly were done here.